you might have been depressed because you moved away, and I understand that. And you didn't bother to be there for me or ask I me would, if I was okay at all. I ever. did all the time. You didn't. No, do you it. were always just like nagging me to do things. Because Hello, and welcome to Split Decision. I'm your host, Kot Takahashi, and today we brought four ex couples to the studio. Some of these couples are reuniting for the first time, some are still seeking closure. That is a lie. And some may still be in love. I really just like want to be with you. You're about to face some of the toughest, most intimate questions you've ever been asked. You guys ready? Yep. Yeah. All right, let's do this. The first prompt is, I will miss having sex with my ex. Make your split decision in three, two, one. All right, go ahead and turn around. <laughs> Dane, you say yes, but Luna, you say no, I will not miss having sex with my ex. Why is that? Um, I just haven't really felt any sexual urges for anyone for a while, so it's not just him in particular. It's just not something that's been on my mind lately. Mm -hmm. Dane. I mean, yeah, I totally would would love to. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, I'm just gonna have to move on from that. How does it feel knowing that she's stepping on the no right there? Oh, it's, it's no biggie, you know? Okay. Were you expecting that? Yeah, I was. Yeah? Yeah. Okay. Because I've been trying. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Ray, you're no, but Mia, you're yes. So Mia, I'd love to hear more. I feel like the sex was cool for the time and I enjoyed it, but I feel like if we were to try to revisit it now, it would be weird just on like an emotional level, but mm -hmm. like the sex was good physically. Ray, why are you, why are you on no? Um, the sex was better for Mia than it was for me, mm. just because of the dynamics that we had specifically. It was more focused on what she wanted than what I wanted. What was it that you wanted that you weren't really getting? I'm a top. I'm so. also a top? Yeah, so that, that's, <laughs> like what we're, that's the conversation we're having yeah, here. Like, yeah. I like, I enjoy topping, like, yeah. a lot. And okay. so, like, I was, like, switching to accommodate, and you were not as much. Yeah. Got it. Yeah. Yeah, to be frank, I wanted to strap her more than she wanted to be strapped. <laughs> <laughs> That's what's happening. It's crazy that you've said that verbally. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> I'm Mia and I'm 23. My name is Ray Pfizer. I'm 25. Um, we dated for two years. We weren't compatible. Yeah. We were better off as friends. Priscilla, Victor, you both say yes. <laughs> I think we had a really good sex life. I'd only ever been with one other person before him. So when we got together, I was really given the space to like explore like sexuality in the room and new things. And it was just like a very safe and fun space. <laughs> For me, I'm super into like the BDSM world. Okay. So getting to like finally explore that after like just reading about it for so long okay. was very fun for me. <laughs> one out of 10, how was the experience? I was a 10. How's it for you, Victor? Uh, a 10, 10. 10. <laughs> 10. I just want some suspense there, yeah. Ray, how about you? One to 10, how would you rate uh, sex with Mia? Uh, it's like a six. A six? Yeah, it's like not bad sex. That's all I can really say. You got what you wanted a lot more than I did. My, Jen, what attracted you both together? So I actually, he's not my type at all. <laughs> so then, yeah, so it was only after that he grew on me, then I was like, I do like taller, bigger guys. Okay. Yeah, so then now he's very attractive to me. How about for you? Yeah, it's like, same thing. We, uh, we started as best friends, and then so I never got attracted to her whatsoever. Um, and then it just grew, you know? It's, it's that, that love, that bond that we had. We were together for eight years. And we broke up about three years ago. We broke up because of trust issues and respect issues for each other and communication. Okay, the next prompt is, my family and friends thought I could do better. Make your split decisions in three, two, one. Go ahead and turn around. Wow. Wow. <laughs> wow. Interesting, okay. Uh, Luna, you say, Yes, your friends and family thought you could do better. Tell us more. My family liked Dane. It was more so my friends knowing of situations that we had been through. Do you have an example? So, I remember New Year's Eve in New Orleans? Mm -hmm. Yeah. I was pretty what angry. Happened? What happened? Um, <laughs> we, went, we went to a show and we came back and 
I had said something that upset him. He kind of threw a fit and he just walked out the door and I ended up spending New Year's alone that night at my friend's house because everybody else was off doing stuff. So I was just kind of crying in the bed by myself and had no idea where he went just because of a small argument that had ensued earlier. Okay, and then, so your friends know about that kind of stuff. It, you know, made them think less of him for sure. I was not the best on that New Year's and I am very aware that her friends weren't too fond of me after that for sure. And that was just like getting close to the end of our relationship. But I, my friends and family really liked Luna, you know. Not all of them liked me. Yeah. Yeah, no. So Ray, your friends and family thought you could do better? Yes. Um, you never really met any of my family, but all of my friends think that you took advantage of me and like didn't appreciate all the things that I did for you. They also found out about the PowerPoint that you made about my red flags after our first date. That's so and funny. That's, the, isn't it hilarious? The PowerPoint? Yeah, yeah. she made a PowerPoint that? of my red flags after our first date and she went through it with her friends and then- We were drunk. Eventually I found out and I like told my friends like, haha, and they were like, hey, that's actually not okay. Mm. So. Mia, why did you say yes? The way that you would speak to me sometimes mm -hmm. like wasn't okay. Like you almost had like no filter to a point where you were just like being mean to me all the time. Yeah, that's right. And I was like, damn, this sucks. Like I love you. Yeah, you that's know? my fault, my bad. Grew up in a crazy household. Yeah, <laughs> so yeah. So sorry. I think you were just like working through some stuff and my friends just like saw how that affected me. But they love you now. The next prompt is, I cheated on my ex. Make your split decisions in three, two, one. Okay, go ahead and turn around. Jen, you're on yes. Yeah. So we were just really young. We dated since high school. We realized that we had very different love languages. And then I was just always constantly searching that in other people. But yeah, like I messed up. And then I hurt him a lot because I'm also his first girlfriend and everything. Mm. And so like everything like really came crashing down hard after. How did, how did you find out? It was like a friend that we hung out with in a group uh -huh. for I think like about three years or so. She talked to him and he talked to her behind my back. So then the girl that was with that guy at that time, I found out from her because she sent me me messages okay. that they deleted from each other. So it hurt uh, like really, really, really bad because uh, I'm, I'm a guy of respect, you know, and then that's kind of disrespecting me. And you were in love with her? Yeah, yeah, I was. I mean, she was my first, and then I thought she was my last, too. What was it that made you want to cheat on him? I don't know. Like, I always told him, like, when we started being together, I was like, I hate cheaters because I got cheated on before, too. I think it was just more environmental factors, like how I am with my family. Like, I'm just, like, this perfect person. And then I think I always wanted to, like, self-destruct, self-sabotage. But he was, like, literally everything I ever had. Like, he was the best person, like, best boyfriend. He treated me right. Like, our love language was very different. But, like, I mean, he loved me, and I know that he loved me. But then I don't know what happened, and I, like, that's my biggest regret. After the cheating, I tried to make it work, you know? But it was still in my mind, in the back of my mind. The trust was gone. Is there a chance? I mean, there's, there's always a possibility. The next prompt is, since our separation, I've been with someone who is better in bed. Make your split decisions in three, two, one. All right, go ahead and turn around. So Jen, after the breakup, yeah. there was someone else who was even better. So like when I was with him, like that's the best I ever had. But then like when we broke up, like I was with someone that like really loved me, like really like just gave me everything like in the short amount of time that like for eight years, like, I couldn't even feel with him. So mm. that's why I think that love, their sex was better in the sense that it was like love. But I think that's what I was missing from him was like, I couldn't receive love the way that he gave. Did you feel that way too during the sex? Like you couldn't no. give your love? I, I thought I gave my all 100% of it because that's all I knew. So I, I gave my 100. Okay, Victor, <laughs> how do you feel that um, she's standing on yes right now, that yes, she had a better experience since you? I mean, good for you. That's <laughs> awesome. Yeah. Uh, I feel like we were always pretty sex positive, so I think yeah. uh, if you're out there having great sex, like I'm not 
going to hold it against you. It would be weird to uh, expect her to only have bad sex after the fact, you know? <laughs> I feel like I kind of pushed you to date other people. He, yeah, he kind of really yeah. did. I kind of I had a very negative view on relationships after we broke up because I was like just completely shattered and all my thoughts and beliefs were pretty much destroyed. Oh. <laughs> He's like, you're young, you're single, like get out there, meet people, like leave your house. We were together for two years and we broke up in July of 2021. I started feeling like I wasn't wanting to be in a relationship anymore, so yeah. Broke up with her. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the next prompt is, I never fully trusted my ex when we were together. Make your split decisions in three, two, one. All right, everybody, go ahead and turn around. So, Ray, you never fully trusted Mia when yeah. we were together. So the second time that we dated, it was Polly. And it started off with me being a secret to one of her other partners. So I didn't know that I existed. And then once I found out that I existed, didn't know why I was in Mia's life, i.e. we were dating. Um, so it just made me feel like anyone that she brought around, I didn't fully trust that they knew who I was and why I was around. For whatever reason, Mia felt like uh, she couldn't tell this person about me. Mia, how do you feel about that? Yeah, I mean, that's pretty fair. I mean, it was kind of a weird situation because they had kind of like asked not to be privy to those things. And we were Polly at the time. That was like her kind of preference with things. So I just like didn't bring it up. But I was like your main. So it wasn't like we were just hooking up. You were like literally my girlfriend. Yeah. And she was the side. You know what I'm saying? Not to like break down polyamorous relationships oh like God. that. But like you were my girlfriend, like I was your partner. And yeah. then she was just someone that was a branch of other relationships. Uh -huh. But did this other person know that? Did yes. you communicate that to them? Yes. Yeah, everyone knew. Like mm, I, not everyone. She knew you existed. She just didn't know like who you were because she didn't want to know. Like, I don't know, man. It's over. You, you, don't, you don't even speak anymore. So it's, it's chill, dude. Yeah. <laughs> I don't. It is what it is. Luna, so you never the trust wasn't fully ever there. In the beginning it was, um, and then there was an incident where I was using his phone as a flashlight and a girl texted him saying, come cuddle. And he swore that nothing sexual had happened to cause that. And whether I told myself I believed him or not, I just never could really come back from it. Anything you want to say to that? Yeah, so like that was, out of the blue for me as well. That was my girl best friend at the time. But no, uh, yeah, it was a random come cuddle and she knew that I was with Luna. And like, it was just like a Dane thing said she that, was doing it on purpose. Yeah, to try, I think she was like, doing so it I could see it and get jealous to try and mm. get at me. So if you felt so, that way, then why was the trust gone though? Oh no. I, I, oh no, that's story. what you're saying. Yeah, that's that, that was, was my saying. story. Oh, I see, I see, I see. True story. Gotcha. <laughs> Um, I don't know. I feel like that could have been part of it, but I didn't know if that was the whole story. How come you don't believe him when he says that? Something probably happened there. I don't know. But even if it didn't, like the fact that someone had felt comfortable enough to text him that while she knew he was dating me still made me uncomfortable. And I could see why her trust was gone. My trust for her would have been gone if, this, if the tables were turned, you know? Hold on. This is getting kind of spicy. Take a second right now to smash that like button. And if you're really enjoying yourself, how about that subscribe button too while you're at it? And let's get back into it. The next prompt is, I've recently cried thinking about my ex. Make your split decisions in three, two, one. My, we recently cried over Jen, huh? Yeah. I mean, like, it's not just one time. It was like multiple times since replaying the scenarios. It's like shattering, you know? Like, you had hopes and dreams of mm -hmm. something that would, you know, be like the end, but it's not. And then, like, every time that I think about it, it's just, it's just like heartbreaking. How about you? Well, probably all the time. So probably like, probably like last week or something. Mm. I don't know. <laughs> we always try to talk about like getting back together because like we're like almost 30 now. Like, we should have like a family and kids, or I mean like it's expected of me to have family and kids, but then I feel like there's so much things that are just broken and dented in our relationship that it, I don't think it'll go well, even though I want it to go well. So if I never like messed up in the past, or if I never like took him for granted, then we would probably still be together. As y'all have like observed, 
I'm mostly like in the wrong in our relationship pretty much. I was really lazy and I could have done a lot of things differently. So whenever I think about how happy I was in our relationship and how I was really like not the best, makes me, you know, tear up, cry. How do you feel knowing that he's this emotional about this? I feel bad, I guess. I mean, I feel, honestly, I feel neutral over it. I hate that he still gets upset about it, but it is what it is. It is what it is. The next prompt is, I loved my ex more than they loved me. Make your split decisions in three, two, one. Okay, go ahead and turn around. So Mai, you loved uh, Jen more than she loved you. There, there were things that she did that showed me that she doesn't love me. She's like a word of affirmations kind of kind of person, but even though the words say that you know she loves me, it doesn't show it. The disrespect, the mistrust, yeah. I mean, I thought I knew what love was. I thought I loved him, but of course, like if you love someone, you don't really go and do that. And I would say like now I feel like I appreciate and love him more. So roles have been reversed now, but before it was definitely him loving me a mm. lot more. Mm. Priscilla, you loved him more than he loved you during the relationship? He initially pursued me. And then as we got more and more into it, I mean, he's the one who broke up with me. So obviously I loved him more. At that point, he was my forever. I never saw anybody else but him. For like me. the one? Yeah, he was just the one. Victor, did you know that she thought, she felt that you were the one? Uh, yeah, she would say it all the time. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, you know what? I, I learned uh, something about myself in that relationship and that was that I'm not that much of a relationship person. It was like tough to reconcile because while we were in it, it felt like this is such a good relationship. This is so solid. Like this is somebody that I should have in my life forever. But it still wasn't like satisfying on the inside. Like I still didn't feel like I wanted to be in a relationship. So you haven't been in a relationship since? Since we broke up, I haven't dated anybody. But no, he's definitely the kind of person where mid conversation, he's like, I'm done with this conversation. Mm. And that's how I felt a long time about our relationship that he mm. just woke up and was like, yeah, I'm good about this now. The weird... How did that feel when you, when you discovered that? When you felt that from him, like, oh, he's done. I re remember specifically when I felt it, it was about three months before we broke up because we went to the movies and I went to hold his hand and it was the first time he didn't hold it back. Mm. And I just instinctively knew that like something was off. And then two days after my birthday, Ooh. that's when he decided. Uh, Luna. Dane, you both say yes, you both loved each other more. Dane, let's start with you. You know, in a relationship, you're, you're, you're physical with your partner. You tell them that they're cute, amazing, and that you love them. You always reassure them how much they mean to you. And I never got any of that from Luna, mm. which made me it really that is like- a lie. That um, is apparently not that's true. a lie, but that's how I felt. And it just like threw me off in our relationship for sure. I tried to say positive things to you, but if you didn't hear them, that's- what was it you didn't hear, like? Things that made me feel appreciated or important, you know? Mm -hmm. And so why do you say yes, Luna? Actions speak louder than words. I feel like I made more sacrifices for our relationship. And I just don't like, felt like my, I didn't feel like my energy was matched by Dane. I think they both have like different love languages. Cause I feel like you probably have words of affirmation. So you need that. And then the, oh, yeah, so that's was, probably uh, what she, like yeah, you thought she was sure. lacking. Cause that's how me and I I was I also going to say that we both have yeah. different perspectives of yeah. love and it's just like, it doesn't work because we can't give each other what we each other need, you yeah, know? You like telling me you love me and I'm beautiful doesn't equate to me asking you for help in a certain area of our relationship and like over and over and over again. I definitely feel like I made sacrifices that went unnoticed in our relationship still, and you still don't even notice them. What kind okay, of sacrifices? Like, what? like moving all the way from Florida to live in Alabama so she could be closer to her family. And You're I, the one who like, you wanted to move in together the most. You wanted to make that move initially. I, right? I, don't, I think you wanted to make the move the most, but I'm, 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 I, don't want to, I don't want to do this right now. <laughs> this, is the, this is the place to do it, I feel like. Yeah. I'm the one who got the apartment. I went and worked and I I didn't go it. work at all or make any money or put in or contribute to any of that. I know you did a lot, but I just felt like I, I did feel like I was doing more. Did you feel like you were doing more? I didn't feel like I was doing more. I felt like we were equally like striving for you something. You felt like it was equal. I feel like it was equal for a while there, but until I realized that she didn't feel the same way. And then I stopped trying as hard. 
I see. Ray, you want to share your experience? There's a period of time where I would literally bend over backwards for you and like run across all the seas to like make you happy and I didn't feel any of that back. I like thinking about it right now, I can't think of a single thing that you ever did for me that was specifically like for me, like just to make me happy. I think you loved how much I loved you more than you actually loved me. I didn't feel loved by you until honestly like recently. I don't know, it felt like too little too late for me. Like by the time you were like open and willing to like put an effort like that, like I was already kind of like checked out like. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, the entire time though, I didn't feel any love from you. Like you actually forced me not to say I love you the first time I wanted to say it because you could like see that I wanted to say it. You were like, hey, don't say that. So that I didn't say it. You didn't, you didn't want Ray to say I love you. I don't even remember how many months in that went, but it was like really quick. So I felt like it was soon. Do you remember actually? Yeah, it was like only a couple months in, I want to say. Oh, that's interesting. I don't know. I was a different person back then. Yeah. <laughs> but you yeah. felt the love. You, yeah, you I felt her. like, yeah, I genuinely felt like I loved you. Honestly, I think we only dated for so long because we were attracted to each other. Like everything else was like fine. Yeah. So. Yeah, I would agree. <laughs> Glad we settled that. <laughs> the next prompt is, I made significant sacrifices in our relationship that went unnoticed and unappreciated. Make your split decision in three, two, one. Go ahead and turn around. Jennifer, what were some of those things that you did? Like he's just not really used to his parents telling him I love you and all that. So then I feel like the way that I cared about him, it was just very unnoticed because he didn't really read how I give love the same way. Like, you don't tell me that I'm pretty or you don't tell me mm -hmm. that you enjoy being with me. Uh, we hang out and I'll be like, oh my God, I really wanna hang out with you. And he's like, we have been hanging out, but then we're just like in our room, like doing nothing. I just felt like he didn't really care of how much love I gave him. I mean, our love languages are completely opposite. I grew up with like a, a household that, you know, them saying sorry to me is like, hey, you wanna go eat? Kind of thing. So it's like never mm -hmm. that those words. So I'm not used to it. And so it, it's really hard. It's like she's speaking Spanish, I'm speaking Chinese, and we're trying to like, you know, communicate. It's mm -hmm. not, it's not easy, you know. Mm -hmm. And like at that time, like there's no way that to recognize it. We weren't mature enough. We didn't know anything um, until now. Hmm. Uh, Dane, so you made significant sacrifices that you felt went unnoticed. Most definitely, like just all of the love that I gave her, honestly, that I feel like it went unnoticed and unappreciated because like, it's just, it was more materialistic from her and I felt like I had to do more things in order for her to notice what I had to offer. Yeah, but the question was like, what did you sacrifice for a relationship that I didn't appreciate? Me moving all the way to, from Florida just to come live with you in Alabama. But that was something you told me you wanted to do. Because you said you wanted me to do it, and I made that sacrifice to be away from my family so you could stay with yours. And it didn't mean anything to you. It did, and that's why I tried so hard to keep everything we had going. And I did too. By that time, that's when our relationship definitely started to fail, and that's when I feel like you stopped caring as much. Maybe, I mean, you might have been depressed because you moved away, and I understand that. I get that, but. And you didn't bother to be there for me or ask I me would, if I was okay at all. I ever. did all the time. You didn't. No, do you were always just like nagging me to do things. Because you felt like the move was a big enough sacrifice, was to show your love. Yeah, I mean, for sure. And like, I put us on this really dope catering gig, and I got us both these dope jobs. Just because you moved to where I was doesn't mean you don't have to uphold your end of the relationship anymore. And I, I still upheld my end of the relationship. You just stopped noticing me. Okay, I don't want to get like into an argument, but. See, like that's every time I bring, like I could sit here and apologize for my parts in the relationship all day long and notice everything that I didn't like do for you. But anytime that I bring up like something I felt in the relationship, you say you don't want to argue and that I'm wrong and that I'm not. I didn't, didn't say you're wrong. You pretty much are. You can say it without saying it. I'm sorry. Like, sorry, I'm, I'm sorry, sorry you're you picture perfect. Oh, <laughs> okay. Yeah, Luna, so like what specifically were like these, like the adult things that you wanted him to do that he wasn't doing? It was simple things like, can you wash your clothes? Can you pick up after yourself? Can you 
after you finish cooking, can you help clean up? But, but it was like such a thing, like even. like I, I could like finish like a bowl of cereal and put the cereal bowl in the sink and just run to the bathroom real quick. Cause you know, it's hard to do things when you gotta use the bathroom. And she'd immediately be like, you didn't wash your freaking dishes. Mm. And that just like, this kind of stuff just happened annoying. so, 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 so many it's times. Like That's about a, a time thing, it was like, like, yeah, it was just, mm. I was over it. It was just always up to me to make sure that things got done. And I feel like that was unsaid in our relationship, but it, that was the way it was. In your mind, that's the way it was. So Ray, you made some significant sacrifices that you felt were unappreciated, unnoticed. Yes. Um, when we started dating, we lived like 45 minutes away from each other. And I would drive to you every weekend. You mm -hmm. came to my apartment once, did the, what, like six months we were together at that time. Um, I flew from overseas to see you, spent like $2,300 or $2, on a plane ticket. And you felt like you were doing me a favor by not charging me rent for the month that I was staying with you, even though I just paid like two over two grand to come see you. No, I appreciate you for driving that much. Like I'll admit I didn't like your apartment. I didn't like driving. I think it's less about me doing it than how you're responding to me doing it. Like I never felt appreciated. And Mia, you're on yes as well. You also feel like you made significant sacrifices that weren't appreciated? I think like emotional labor. No, emotional I don't know. labor? No idea what you're talking about. I don't I honestly cannot imagine a single sacrifice you made for our relationship. Is this about our intimacy? Yeah. That's not a, a sacrifice. No, but you. it is though, because it's like like it was like either it's gonna happen your way or it's not gonna happen at all. Bottoming is like not something I wanna do all the time. And like it, I had to in order to be intimate with you. And there was no like equalness to that whatsoever. And I like was trying to be respectful of the fact that like you weren't comfortable with your body at the time, which is why I did it. But I'm saying that's like a lot of emotional labor to like go through. The intimacy, yeah, I, I'm sorry. I just can't see it that way because I don't, you're not, you didn't, I had such like, Gender confusion, it was insane. And what was going on inside of my brain and how I thought about myself was worlds larger than anything that you could have been experiencing because you couldn't go down on me. I'm being honest. Like, there's no way in the world that you felt as intensely about that as I felt as intensely about how shitty I felt about my body. You're literally telling me that how I felt about it doesn't matter because it pales in comparison to your journey with it's it. It's not that it doesn't matter, but what are you sacrificing from not topping me? Okay, like imagine not being able to top someone that you love. You're a top. Yeah. So it was like my first queer relationship yeah, of and course. I was figuring things out. And yeah. so it was like my identity in my room for growth was not a thing that could happen because of like exterior circumstances. And that sucked for me. And I felt like I, like you only wanted me to be a very specific version of myself mm -hmm. that was in the way that you could have it. And I had to put everything that I was to the side to accommodate that. Does that make sense? Mm -mm. Is it because, <laughs> sorry, are you saying that like who you became wasn't someone that I wanted to be with? Yeah. I, yeah, I would agree with that 100%. Okay. Yeah, yeah, fully. I think the same thing for you to me, so. The next prompt is, I wish my ex and I were still together. Make your split decisions in three, two, one. Okay, go ahead and turn around. You know, Dane, I'm, I'm a little surprised to see you on no after this conversation today. Yeah, I know, I changed my mind today. <laughs> really? Yeah. <laughs> you know, just like coming out here with like my own intentions and like just realizing that I'm pretty like stupid for like thinking that me and her would ever have a chance again. And just the way, seeing that the way both of us interact together this whole trip, it just makes me not want to be together with her anymore. How do you feel about that? <laughs> I agree. We just don't mesh well to anymore. Yeah. What, what you came here today hoping for what? For I what? came on this whole trip with Luna just to make her happy. Hopefully that like she would notice that I care enough to spend time with her and do stuff that she wants to do. So that maybe you could get back together? Yeah. But there's no happening with that. So I'm just like accepting it now and standing on no. Mm. Yeah. You say yes, you want to get back together? Um, if there were a maybe, I would say maybe, maybe. But uh, there's a lot to work on. 
we can relate to each and everyone's story a little bit. Um, a lot of it is a lot about communication. I do something for her, she doesn't acknowledge it, right? So I feel like whatever I'm doing is just worthless, right? What do you do for me though that I don't acknowledge it? I feel like I always acknowledge everything. I should have ended it, but I didn't know any better. And so we kind of dragged it on further than we should. And if you could just get the love languages right, you think you could be together? Uh, yeah. And the infidelity, yeah. I think so, because I feel like everyone here, like the reason why we're not together is because like everyone's communication is so different. Mm, yeah. Like it's just, just so like prominent. You did love me. You just loved me in the way that I couldn't even like realize. And then I loved you, but then you didn't care about everything that I did verbally for you. Like me wanting to know where your, like, your whereabouts. He thought I was nagging him the whole time. I'm like, no, I just want to know where you are. Like, just let mm. me know so I can like just feel safe. So you're both trying to change that to be back together? I mean, I want to, but I don't know. I feel like you're not really ready for that conversation or something yet. She was my best friend. She was my girlfriend, my best friend, and pretty much my family, but kind of shattered that. So it's kind of hard to rebuild. But you said yes, so. Yeah, I mean, like, there's always, there's, there's there's always oh, room, yeah. chance, you know? It's always room. But it's not going to happen overnight kind of thing. I still need to work on myself. The next prompt is... I believed we would spend the rest of our lives together. Make your split decisions in three, two, one. Okay, go ahead and turn around. Hmm. So Victor, you thought you would spend the rest of your life with Priscilla. Yeah, in the beginning I did, yeah. Uh, it's like I was saying earlier, I, I learned over the course that we weren't quite compatible, but in the beginning it was, I was like head over heels. I was completely in love. Hmm. She said it herself, I, I uh, pursued her. So just, I don't know. Just couldn't get over myself, I guess. I think it's a, from the moment I saw him, like he literally took my breath away. And then when we got into a relationship, I was like, oh my gosh, this is what I've always wanted. Like this is the exact relationship I've always dreamt of having. And we always had that honest communication. And he kept it through to the end because I said, you know, just always be honest with me. and. He was when he said that he, this was something that he wanted to do or be in anymore. So he's still one of my best friends and I will always have love for him. I'm not in love with him anymore, but that love I have for him will never cease. Mm. Mia, <laughs> so you thought you, were, you two were gonna spend the rest of your lives together. Yeah, I mean, I was like young. I was like 19. I was a baby. Um, yeah, that's wild. Like, I do hope to spend the rest of my life with you, you know? Like, I hope that... Homies? Yeah, I hope that we're homies for, like, a real long time. Like, I hope that I get to be at your wedding and you get to be at mine. And, like, I don't know, I really appreciate you in my life, so... Aw. <laughs> so, Luna, you never felt like Dane was the person I'd be spending the rest of my life with? I feel like we may have ended up being together for a very long time, but I just couldn't really see myself with anyone forever. I don't know. Mm. And then once we neared the end of our relationship, it became more clear that we weren't compatible living together. So it was obvious at that point. I mean, yeah, of course, I thought we were going to you know, spend the rest of our lives together. I don't really spend time in, enough time with people unless that's like my goal. Mm. I think relationships can still be important and not have to end in marriage or, you know, lifelong companionship. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, yeah. for sure. The next prompt is, my ex has a quality that will be really hard to find in someone else. Make your split decision in three, two, one. Okay, go ahead and turn around. Hmm. Well, you know, Luna just has her own qualities about her that, you know, like everybody, every other human does. So I'm not looking for qualities that Luna had in other people anyways. So I say no. Yeah. Mia, what qualities did Ray have that you don't feel like you can find in anyone else? You're a really dope person. I'm glad that I like found you and have you in my life. And I don't think anyone could like fill the specific spot that you fill in my life. It's not like a, like, oh, I could just like put another friend in your spot. I hate that I stepped on no. It's okay. the truth. No, it's like the no, still yeah. how I feel. I, I don't want you to think that you're not like special or anything like that because you definitely like are a good person and someone that like came into my life and like changed it and um, in a net positive, honestly, even though we went through so much. But like, 
I thought that when we broke up, I would never find anyone that I got along with so well. And then I like did. Yeah. So like, I just, it, I, yeah, it was, yeah. it was proof to me that like, it's great that you're here, but if you like weren't, I don't, I think I'd be okay, which I'm sure that you would also be okay. Yeah. About. Like, yeah. it's not on a romantic yeah. level that yeah, I like yeah. stepped here. I appreciate that you're really supportive. I think with Victor, he, he just creates this quality of making me feel so safe and comfortable. He was like, I felt so comfortable anytime he would do this really reassuring thing when we would walk through a crowd. He would always place his hand towards the back of my neck to kind of like guide me in a way. And it was so subtle. I don't even know if you remember, but I, I think about that when I'm in big crowds and it's like, I haven't found that sense of like where I'm with someone and I'm like, oh, I can mm. just like be. It's amazing. Uh, I think Priscilla's probably the kindest person that I've ever met. Uh, she's unbelievably nice. Even the people that are mean to her, which is probably not a good thing, but <laughs> she's super nice. She's incredibly hardworking. I've seen it personally, like the things that she's done to like, go out of her way to take care of her family. She takes incredible care of our dog. Like that dog eats better than I do. Um, yeah, she's just somebody that you can lean on, rely on. Yeah. Let's <laughs> Oh. Has he so, never told you this? You think I'm cool. That's awesome. <laughs> I didn't say cool. Okay, well, maybe not wow, cool. You think I'm cool. kind. <laughs> okay, the next prompt is, I'm ready to ask you in this studio right now, will you take me back? Okay, everyone, make your split decisions in three, two, one. Okay, everybody, go ahead and turn around. <laughs> Some people are like relieved, like, oh, thank God. <laughs> Not on camera, oh my God. This whole trip, I kind of learned that both of us have grown into two completely different people in the last nine months. Definitely on different paths, neither of them negative, just it makes it clear to why we broke up. I think it was kind of eye-opening because I feel like everyone are exes here because they don't see eye to eye at all. And that was really the downfall of everything with us too. It's interesting to see how how solid our friendship is, like all this time later. It's cool to just have all these questions kind of reaffirm it. Well, that's all we had time for today. Thanks for watching this episode of Split Decision. Next up, we're diving into the lives of age gap couples. See you then.